What's going on everybody? Bowman's back in the shop, surplus shop, to talk more shocks. And in case you missed it, Fox just recently released the new Performance Series 2.5 IFP HTO. I know, that's a mouthful, but today we're gonna go over those and talk about what we thought about them against the old Performance Series 2.0s you guys know we love so much. So to give you guys an idea of what these shocks are, let's break down that super long name. So the Performance Series within Fox's large lineup is designed to be a basic bolt-on shock upgrade meant to be better on the street, a little better on the trail, and be a good, comfortable, high-performing option without going too expensive. The 2.5 in that name, or the 2.5 IFP in that name, means it's a two and a half inch diameter internal floating piston monotube shock. So no reservoirs here, but a big thick two and a half inch body. And I think that's gonna be the right combination for most people. Now we do find that a lot of people find the limits of a 2.0, whether it be because of weight or the difficulty of their trails, but also a lot of times find that most of the 2.5s out there on the market have a reservoir, have adjusters, and are very expensive. Ultimately are also tuned for going fast or beating on your rig super hard off-road and we find these 2.5 ifps no reservoir shocks to be a really good compromise that gives you that little bit of extra support without going crazy or breaking the bank now with the rest of the performance series these are an aluminum body which is going to be a great thing for not only heat dissipation even though they don't have reservoirs and corrosion is going to be something you're probably not going to have to be worried about or at least in our lifetimes. Now, the HTO in the name is what we're most excited about, and that is hydraulic top out. So these are position sensitive on the rebound side. Essentially, they use a secondary piston that has its own valve stack that at the end of the suspension stroke, right before it fully ex extends, gives you a little bit more progressive support to soften harsh top outs, which is something that is gonna be really great for a lot of you guys out there, and especially for the applications these shocks are meant for. These are only currently available for three quarter and one ton Chevy, Dodge, and Ford trucks, as well as solid axle stuff like Jeep JTs, JL, Wranglers, and the like. These are applications that are either very heavy or have tons of unsprung mass. And in the case of three quarter, one ton trucks are hilariously oversprung for the amount of damper they put on it from the factory. Now, having this hydraulic top out zone is gonna be a big benefit off-road for you guys going over a hole where your heavy solid axle is gonna to wanna to extend the suspension, top out hard and want you to nose dive the front or the back end. Being able to control rebound that last little bit is going to give you that top out control to keep the vehicle much more stable without sacrificing traction in the normal ride zone. Rebound is a big factor for handling balance as well as how weight is shifted throughout the chassis in a handling event. So tr it has a big factor on overall traction. So they're only doing a little bit of extra control at the end of the stroke where you need it most. Additionally, you could have something like a Jeep, right? That although does have a lot of unsprung mass from axle, isn't as crazy as a heavy one ton truck. It, once you've put a 35, 40 inch tire, you have now added hundreds of pounds of unsprung mass that most dampers really weren't tuned for, which we love about these. Additionally, on the heavier stuff, these heavy duty trucks that are come sprung to carry well over their own curb weight in terms of payload or towing capacity, we also find that they rebound hard. Stiffer springs rebound faster and need more shock to control it and Although you probably want that active spring motion when you do have weight on there so it recovers quickly after a bump and doesn't just pack on the bump stops, you don't want it to top out hard over those big bumps either, which once again, HTO is gonna be your winner for that as well. One of the biggest things we find with a lot of the linear dampers like the Fox and especially the 2.0 is they can be a little limited in terms of low speed compression and overall handling, especially when you add weight. 
We didn't just come to these conclusions out of the blue though. Uh, we actually had a Gladiator come in. We did a basic three and a half inch lift kit using mostly Terraflex parts so that we could test these 2.0 IFBs to the 2.5 HDOs back to back. And here's what we thought. All right, we'll try out on these Fox 2.0s we just put on. It was actually surprisingly soft. The this good thing stuff already rides so much better. <laughs> yeah, it actually rides. I mean, I was expecting it to be comfortable because they're Fox 2.0s and they're pretty comfortable. But what I'm surprised about is like it doesn't flop around like a giant piece of junk. Yeah, I thought it was going to be sloppy. Yeah. And so you still get that like comfort and small bump compliance, but they're still stable and they seem to recover pretty fast. And they just recover right away like it's no big deal i'm gonna drive over some of these <laughs> and it's and it's solid you know if if you had told me these were 2.5s at least on the street i would maybe believe you um just because of how much big bump support they have but they're not they're not harsh Oh yeah, no, not, not at all. No, yeah, I, I'm actually surprised that even at like street pressures, you can't feel the little pebbles and cracks in the road, uh, especially with it being a solid axle. Yeah, I think we're at, what, I think it was at 37 PSI. Oh, and on D loads, 37 PSI on D loads, like that's, uh, that's a lot of tire stiffness. They're, these are an E. Oh yeah, E. Yeah. <laughs> And that's a little much for this truck. So that's saying a lot when it's comfortable on too much sidewall with too much air pressure. And we can just drive over this kind of stuff. Um, bump steers, but not bad. Yeah, and for, you know, this whole lift system, we're well under two grand. Yeah, that little GL is... Yeah, and you can just drop right off of that. I'll be really excited to see what the two fives feel like. Um, we haven't had a chance to really top them out see if we can do that um, but That's even cool. around corners when you just kind of like huck it in it holds it traction control doesn't like it but it holds it so yeah and you can just kind of drive over speed bumps I think like this is lifts like these are like the sweet spot for a lot of people because I can legitimately say this is better on the street because I can just drive over these speed bumps without slowing down, you know? And it's, the solid axle shimmy isn't bad. It is not bad. And that's that says a lot. One, because I know for a fact the geometry isn't dialed right now, but the shocks are making up a big difference in terms of controlling the shimmy. Let's, what, 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 what? That's, that's yes. amazing. We just drove over just straight up parking stops. Like it's no big deal. No, I'm not saying. At full PSI. Yeah, at full PSI, it just rolls right over them. And you get that comfort without sacrificing handling. I would be surprised if this doesn't handle at least as well as stock and is three and a half inches taller on suspension alone, which is saying a lot would something like a bilstein handle better yeah but tag gum it was good enough for me i'm looking forward to seeing what the what the, the two fives the are. two fives do yeah because yeah. they're gonna if they can give just a little bit more support without sacrificing any of that comfort we're in there and with that uh top out no. control it will be very nice to see what that does if we can actually really feel it at least on the street so we've been doing a little testing back to back from the 2.0 IFP to the 2.5 IFP HTOs, those new news. And, you know, we were very surprised with how comfortable these 2.0s were. But after our little test loop on the street with some pretty big bumps, some pretty big successive bumps, we actually found these 2.0s are almost too hot to touch. And we're talking about like a 15 minute run. Uh, so I can see if you were really using these off road for any extended period of time you're going to want a bigger body or a reservoir because we were able to get these burned in hot just on the street. Yeah, this one was 
So it's not even that much different than the, the Fox 2.0. No, through, through these small bumps, that, like through this kind of stuff, I almost imagine it's gonna feel almost the same. Maybe that's a little firmer, a little bit, a little bit. but not much. Like I don't think it'll be worthwhile on base street comfort to go to, you know, go 2.0 or 2.5 either way. Um, I think it's gonna be the bigger bump stuff that you notice it. Oh, wow. Holy oh. That feels a lot better. Oh, that handles really good. Let's do the little simulated slalom. Yeah, it's just that like 5% tighter than the 2.0 yeah. um, on handling, which you probably aren't gonna notice most of the time, but I bet you throw some weight on this thing and it, you really notice it. Um, let's hit this bump. Oh my God. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like that was no big deal. That was yeah. like a nothing. Oh, this one right here? Oh, the, yeah. The, the sequential bumps? Yeah. The, the 2.0s did good. But the 2.0s, yeah, but this is like, they're not there. The shock's not even stressed. You could feel the 2.0 still have to like move and like really compress and extend to deal with it. With these 2.5s just, I don't want to say it's not there at all but the suspension just kind of deals with it. It just yeah. gets it over with that little bit quicker. And I, you know, it doesn't seem like there's as much travel happening. You really notice it on those, uh, those uh, side to side bumps where a solid axle usually wants to pogo stick you to the side. Yeah, I think it can really isolate that bump so much better that you get even less of the solid axliness. We're gonna do this little drop off. Let's see if we can. Oh yeah, yeah. You can There's a lot more bottom control. Yeah, and in the rear, I could feel, I could almost feel that uh, HCO just start to engage. It's like it extended. It was like, nah, that's all you need. Yeah, it seems to like really like that uneven bump a lot better. Oh my, oh, yeah. oh my god. I wasn't sure that we would feel the difference on the two fives on the road, but over this kind of stuff, like can just, it's very good. It, it, there is a, it is noticeably firmer going over the speed bumps. It is, but not in a bad way. No. Like it just isolates it better and faster. Yeah, like it feels firmer, but in a, not a bad way. And I think that's a really good sign for these. I was a little worried that the two fives were, these were going to be like the performance elites or the factory race series where they're harsh, harsh. <laughs> a lot of the time and they're just not. I think that might be that 5 eighths shaft. Oh yeah, that feels good. Yeah. 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 So those bigger square edged hits, it's happier on for sure. But, oh man, that feels that, so good. Yeah. You take that turn and hit a bump or you hit a bump that's only on one side of the vehicle or bigger on the, on the one side of the vehicle and it handles it almost like independent suspension. Yeah. Like it's not doing that high side goes up, low side goes down and pogo sticks you off the it's ground. The, the big complaint about how solid axle trucks are riding bad on the street um, is, isn't isn't like, that it's not that big of a deal it's not that big of a deal. no it yeah which you know geometry and the base suspension design always does matter but these shocks are almost good enough to make it feel like independent suspension it doesn't have those funky idiosyncrasies that are yeah that you knew normally you know would relate to a solid axle setup. So that's great. And for something that's streetable, you can still use off road. And I would imagine use pretty hard. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, I mean, there's not much more you can ask for. You know, I think a lot of people would be happy with the 2.0s, but if you're really wheeling it, you're gonna want that additional dampening force, cooling. And if you have a lot of weight, an HTO is gonna be great. Now, is it worth two times, a little bit more than two times the cost? of a 2.0 i think if you are the type of person that would need this so you have a heavier setup you have really heavy wheels and tires um or let's say you carry variable load right and that forces you to have to run a stiffer spring let's say in the rear mm -hmm. i think that hgo is going to make it so that when you don't have weight it's still livable so yeah. for the right person i you know they could charge more for these 
I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And and if you you know if you want to get rowdy, you're gonna have the support too. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And I mean, I've tested a bunch of 2.0s on my or 2.5s on my Bronco, and even without a reservoir, it takes a lot to get them hot. So I think even if you might occasionally like to party with them, they more than got it. I think so. I think the biggest compliment we can give these new 2.5 HTOs is that they felt almost identical to the 2.0 basic IFP series shocks at lower speeds and over smaller bumps, which is what we love them for. But they were much tighter on handling, had much more composed rebound characteristics to where they didn't take a second bounce over big bumps. And over big bumps, they really used less suspension to travel, ironed out the inconsistency a lot faster and allowed us to keep on trucking. Uh, now, that's not to say these 2.0s don't ride great and you can't smack a couple bumps, but if you had a little additional weight or you like to push it a little harder off-road but aren't going absolutely crazy, you will love the added support of these 2.5s, especially since they don't come with any detriment in terms of comfort. Basically, they let you have your cake and eat it too and solve a lot of the big issues that we've had with the 2.0 series shocks. We find them sometimes to be a little loose on handling, not great under a load, and just like any two inch body shock, can be overwhelmed by either big bumps or successive bumps. Uh, they also lack a little bit of control and rebound on more stiffer sprung applications, and if you are really wheeling, it can burn out fast. Now these 2.5s have almost double the potential dampening force, so they control stiffer springs better, they're much tighter on handling, and although they don't have a reservoir, the fact that they have such a larger fluid supply leads us to believe that they're not gonna work as hard on something that does go off-road and might give you a little bit more life. So if you have something that spends a lot of time on the trail, uh, but also might be heavy or you're hitting serious trails, might have big tires that require more dampening force from your shocks, or you have something that you drive on the street, you want it to be as comfortable as possible, it still be super stable under a load and you don't want to have to climb under your truck to do adjustments all the time. These 2.5 IFPs are a winner and I think they might be the sweet spot for weekend warriors, do it all guys, and people who take their trucks and use them like trucks all the time. Now, if you have questions about these 2.5s, Yield 2.0s, or any other shock from Fox or any other brand, make sure to hop on shocksurplus.com or leave us a comment below and we'd love to help you out. Otherwise, make sure you're subscribed for the next episode of Shock Talk. And in the meantime, we'll see you out on the trails.